If you're interested in learning how to make this kind of easy peel, UV protected, waterproof, high resolution sticker, then stick around and watch the rest of the video. So my goal is to find some artwork to put on my computers. So for that, I headed over to DeviantArt and looked at kind of robotic, sci-fi, and then actually ran into some other stuff like this that I really liked. Video games, some anime characters, some original artwork. All good stuff. So the first step to import this into the workflow is to upsample it all so it'll print at higher quality. So I brought it all into Gigapixel. So here's um, Gigapixel AI at work. I've turned everything off. So noise suppression is off or at least low. We're not removing any blur, we're not doing any face recovery, etc. All we're doing is just putting it in art and CG mode, upping it to 6x and letting it go. There's the input image and there's the output. Magic input and output. Great. This is gonna look a lot better printed. Another example. Yes. So let's bring this into Photoshop and start cutting out our stickers. I've got the artwork loaded up. I'm going to use the select, select and mask tool to quickly cut out everything except the pixels we need for the stickers. So we'll use select subject and shift the edge out 100% and add about 50% contrast, which seems to look good for line art, and we're done. That's our um, sticker selection. We just need to convert this to a layer so that we have a transparent background, invert the selection, and then delete everything that isn't the sticker. Then export this as a PNG and we'll call this companion cube. So let me bring in one of these near artworks and we'll place her on the sheet. And then um, we're going to draw a box around her in a different color. So notice that her outline is red right now, but we'll make this box purple. So that's going to come into play later on when we cut this out. All of the red outlines are going to be uh, kiss cuts, which will be the actual sticker. And then the purple outlines will be die cuts. So these uh, pieces of the sticker sheet will be cut out individually and it'll be a bit easier to remove each one. So let's talk about materials. I'm using the online labels OL176WI waterproof gloss inkjet paper. This has a single perforation on the back um, so that for the most part, it's just a full sheet of paper. It comes in a nice hard case, so it's unlikely to be marred during transit to your home. And it has uh, all the right properties, like it's waterproof, uh, it survives the dishwasher, and it prints really nice because of the gloss. The other thing that I'm using is the Oregard lamination sheet. So, this specifically is the Oregard 236, which is designed for water-based inkjet prints. And the advantage of using the 236 over the 215 is the 236 works better with inkjet prints. So, um, you know, you can definitely see the difference in an A-B test. There's more splotchiness to the 215 
whereas the 236 is about two to three times more clear in uh, specular light. So let's, uh, I've loaded the sticker paper into the printer. On the Canon, I have to set the type of paper. Yeah, so one thing about this printer is without a uh, ICC profile for the paper, you can't print it high quality, which means you won't actually get 1200 PPI out of it. So the trick is to use a scanner that's calibrated with Silverfast. I'm using Silverfast 9 and a uh, one of the scanners that it supports. And I um, have like a calibration target that I use to calibrate the scanner. And then I printed a calibration sheet on the Pro 1000 and scanned it in to produce an ICC profile for this kind of sticker paper. So now I can go into the options for this printer and select this type of sticker paper and I'll get a color accurate uh, high PPI print. So now let's finish up the cutout lines and print it. First off, uh, I've already done most of these, but we'll use the offset tool, select a sticker that we'd like to produce a border around for cutting. And I've been giving an offset of about 0 0.025 for white stickers, sticker borders like this. Hit apply. Now you have two red borders. You have to click and reselect the sticker and then set its border to transparent. And you'll see that the original border went away. So now we're left with a simplified cut border. And this is better for a couple of reasons. One is that the original cut border was probably a little more complicated than it should have been. The other issue is that because the cut border was right on the edge, it would look pretty ragged but by leaving a good amount of margin, it looks much more intentional whenever the cutter goes too far. The other way to do this is to do an internal cut. However, since this artwork has a lot of fine edges that I don't want to lose, I've decided to opt for a white border around everything. You can also do a black border, but that would have had to have been done in Photoshop before we get to this step. So now we're ready to print. Um, it is important to have these registration marks turned on, as I mentioned earlier. We'll hit print, select the printer, and under preferences for the printer, I'm going to select the profile that I've created for this kind of paper with highest quality. It's a portrait document. Otherwise, everything should be ready to go here. So let's go ahead and print it. Okay, so we're set to do the lamination now. I'm using this manual laminator. I've tightened the knobs down three turns, and I've loaded in just the tip so it's uh, held inside the laminator. I've cut the sheet so that it's smaller than the letter-sized sticker paper. And now I'm gonna uh, start the lamination by first blowing any dust off the surface and then moving pretty quick. Luckily, I don't see any dust on the sheet. So yeah, if you move pretty fast, uh, dust, dust, dust and bubbles, they typically don't happen at all. So you want to get it within the lines and mostly in the upper left. And fairly square, like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, because that's what these registration marks are for after all. All right, um, I have the rollers set 
a little bit to the left and right of the sticker paper to try to keep it as close in as possible. Um, I don't want to put a roller directly on because I'm worried about it marring the surface. So uh, we're going to go into line mode by selecting line. And the way I have it configured, red is our kiss cut outline, meaning our sticker outline, and purple is going to be our die cut outline. So I've configured um, a preset for that as well. So kiss and die. The kiss preset, just in case you want to copy, is um, using the auto blade. It's using a setting of six for the blade depth, force of 20, speed of five, and one pass. And then the die cut, on the other hand, is using a, a blade depth of eight, a force of 30, a speed of 10, and two passes to make sure it gets through. All right, let's send it. Um, with the silhouette machine, I've calibrated it to make sure we get really good cuts. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the, the calibration process again on camera, but it's just one of the options in the tool. So yeah, the silhouette comes with uh, two tools, whereas the cry cut only came with one of these. This one is used for removing the stickers more easily. This one's used for scraping any extra off to clean the mat more easily. Uh, I also kind of like their mats better because they're clear, so it's a bit easier to differentiate it from anything behind it. All right. And let's take our sticker off. Looks good. I'm pulling at an extreme angle with the mat to make sure I put as little pressure as possible on the sticker. And there we go. Uh, the last thing we want to do is we want to remove the extra sticker from the top uh, and just expose that kiss cut. So that is our sticker. So check out the final quality. We have some really nice looking stickers for our cyberpunk setup. This one was a little rough around the edges, so definitely need to tune the kiss cut a little better. This cyberpunk on cyberpunk I like a lot. That's pretty good. More of a gamer aesthetic on the back. And then, of course, love is war, love is war. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the whole setup. Thanks everybody for taking the time to, to watch the whole process. I hope it helps someone else who's trying to make these kinds of high quality stickers for themselves.